Anyone that's ever tried to play like Stevie Ray Vaughan has almost definitely played licks that sound like this. The sound of incorporating the 9 and the flat 9, if you don't know what that means, bear with me, into the blue scale is a signature characteristic of Stevie Ray Vaughan's playing style as are the rhythms used to play these notes. Those licks that you just heard me play are very useful, but I often find that when you learn a lick just for the sake of getting it note for note, when you do that, you're not really capitalizing on what you can take from it and make it your own, so to speak. So what I'm gonna teach you today is how you can take those two signature characteristics of Stevie Ray Vaughan's playing style and incorporate them into your own playing in a way that doesn't make you sound like another Stevie Ray Vaughan clone. And I guess a good place to start would be to show you those two licks that I played at the start of the video. So the first one went something like this. And the second one went something like this. Now, if you want to learn those note for note, then obviously you can skip back, pause the video and look at the tab and do it that way. But as already mentioned, that's not really the purpose of this video. So let me explain what I meant earlier when I said nine and flat nine. And for anyone that already knows what that means and is already comfortable with intervals, feel free to skip ahead to the time code displayed on screen. So when I say nine and flat nine, those are what's known as intervals. An interval is the space between two notes. Now, if I was to give you a full explanation of intervals and the intervals of the blue scale in particular, this video would just become way too long. So for now, I'll just give you an explanation of what a ninth is for the purposes of this video. I'm gonna use position one of the blue scale as an example here. So we're in G. <laughs> So the blues scale contains a root, a flat third, perfect fourth, flat fifth, perfect fifth, and flat seventh. And then you're back to the octave. Root, flat third, perfect fourth, flat fifth, perfect fifth, flat seventh, back to the octave. These are all intervals that are derived from the natural minor scale with the exception of the flat five. The flat five is unique to the blues scale. Now between the root and the flat third, I'm gonna demonstrate this on the high E string. Between the root and the flat third, which you could also call a minor third, but for this video, I'm just gonna use the term flat. There are two notes. So one is the ninth, which is a semitone or one fret lower than the flat third. Okay, there's the flat third here on fret six. And here's the ninth, a fret below it. And one fret below that note is the flat ninth. And these are also known as the major second and the minor second. So you have root, flat nine, or minor second, ninth, or major second as it's also called, and the flat third. Root, flat nine, nine, flat third. So these are two notes that Stevie Ray would throw in to the blue scale all the time. When you're playing in multiple octaves, instead of saying major second and minor second, you would say major ninth and minor ninth, or in the case of this video, nine and flat nine. These are called compound intervals because they span across multiple octaves. When you're playing a solo, you don't just stay in one octave. <laughs> Usually you're going all over the place. When you reach the octave of any scale, the scale then repeats in that octave. For example, here is the natural minor scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I would go eight, nine, so on and so forth. Instead of going one, two, I'd go eight, nine. 
Okay, to summarize all of that, all you really need to bear in mind is that between the root and the flat third, there are two additional notes that you could throw into the blues scale, the nine and the flat nine. Now I realize that that was a very, very brief description of what intervals and compound intervals are, but as I said, I didn't want this video to be too long. So if you are actually interested in learning more about intervals, more about the blues scale, the minor scale, the major scale, all of that good stuff, and you want to be able to take that information and apply it to your own playing so that you can become a confident improviser in any area of the neck, then check the link in the description because I have 50% off coupons available to use for my online guitar course, Bulletproof Guitar Player. All right, now let's move on to the two different rhythms that make these licks different from one another. In the first lick, you would play the ninth, then the root, then hammer on to the flat nine, pull off to the root, and then trail off down the scale, whichever way you want to. Ninth, root, hammer onto the flat nine, pull off to the root, come down the scale. So that's one of the rhythms that Stevie would often use for a lick like that. The other, which you can hear in the second lick, doesn't have any hammer-ons, it's just got a pull-off. And to refresh your memory, here's what it sounds like. So pick the ninth, then the flat nine, and pull off immediately to the root, and come down the scale. That's it. Ninth, flat nine, pull off to the root, come down the scale. I'll play the first lick and then the second so that you can clearly hear the difference between the two. And now the second one. The first. The second. All right, so now that you have a good understanding of both of these characteristics, you can start to experiment with them to come up with some licks of your own. So instead of constantly applying these rhythms to the nine and the flat nine, you could also apply them to the five and the flat five of the blues scale, like so. And of course, you can do it with the nine and flat nine, but in other positions of the scale as well. If you want to avoid sounding like a Stevie Ray Vaughan clone, you could build up to those notes by doing something of your own instead of doing this all the time. Because that there is very, very reminiscent of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Not that that's a bad thing, but if you want to make it your own, then I would try and experiment by building up to those notes in a different way, for example. So to end these videos, I always like to include a couple of examples of licks that I have come up with using the concepts that I've taught in the video. The first one makes use of both rhythms on the five and flat five, as well as the nine and flat nine of the G blues scale. And it's over a funky backing track and sounds like this. And here's what that lick sounds like, slowed down, and I'll put the tab on screen so that you can play along. And the second lick just uses the second rhythm that I showed you earlier but it's in the key of C major. So instead of using the C minor pentatonic scale or the C blues scale, I'm using the C major pentatonic scale. 
So the rhythm is applied to the major seventh and the minor seventh interval of the scale. So it's applied to these notes. So that's part of the C major pentatonic scale. And just below the root is the seventh, well the major seventh to be exact, and below that is the minor seventh. Again, if you don't really understand why that is and you want to improve your theory knowledge as a guitar player, there is a link in the description to my online course. But for now, you can still learn this lick and work on it at home. So here it is played to speed. And slowed down lick number two sounds like this. All right, that does it for today's video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you have suggestions for videos that you'd like to see on this channel in the future, please let me know by dropping a comment below and I will take your suggestions on board. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up below and click subscribe for more.